Uh, this one is an update on Spectrum Auction 110. Let me give you guys kind of the, I guess how it's played out this week. There have been four days of auction and I think today wrapped up day number four officially and I've got the numbers for you. Uh, I'll just kind of give you everything we know and then I'll give you a little bit of um, some commentary from me on a personal level like how I'm seeing it and how I think this is going to play out. So current progress in the Spectrum Auction 110. Uh, let's take a look at some of these numbers thus far through the 3 gigahertz frequency Spectrum Auction 110. Uh, story credits go to Mike Dano of LightReading.com and Bevan Fletcher of FierceWireless.com. Spectrum Auction 110, the FCC's newest mid-band Spectrum Auction for 5G Spectrum, entered day number 4, Friday, today, October 8th. Most financial analysts are saying that it's still a little bit early to tell whether the big four operators, so we got T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon, and Dish, uh, we still don't really know exactly, you know, who got what. Uh, we'll know that at a later time, but we do know that they are all in the mix, all right? So we don't know how much money they're going to spend. We know how much money they've spent so far. Uh, I would say that I don't expect it to generate the revenue that C-Band did, uh, what's up, RFK Tech? Glad you could stop by tonight. I think, uh, you know, being that the Spectrum is high-powered and it is more like, you know, C-Band. Uh, I know it sits kind of below C-Band. C-Band's 3.7 to 3.9 gigahertz. CBRS is at 3.5 uh, to, what, 3.6 or something like that. And then right below it, you know, you got your, uh, the Spectrum. And I don't think it has a name, so it, we'll just call it um 3.4 gigahertz i guess so um yeah uh we know that the carriers are going to go in big we know that the cable isps are not going to go big because i don't think they're involved i don't think they signed up to be a part of this auction so as of thursday the fcc completed eight rounds of bidding on this 3.45 to 3.55 gigahertz spectrum the spectrum is auctioned in 10 megahertz blocks in increments it has generated thus far a total of uh or as of thursday it was 1.185 billion in winning bids and there were three more rounds today and i think it's just under 1.6 billion after 11 rounds interesting development is that it's believed that one large bidder has dropped from the auction and that likely probably happened after round 10. There doesn't seem to be any excess bidding demand as of right now. Seems pretty standard. No anomalies or anything like that. Bidding resumes on Tuesday with four rounds scheduled for that day. So nothing on Monday. Bidding will likely continue through the next several weeks. Probably through December from what I'm hearing. Uh, we wouldn't know who won and, and how much of it any sooner than January. So that'll give you a time frame as to when we'll learn more. Um, you know, so how much they spend, how much each carrier receives. Many analysts are, susce are suspecting the activity in recent rounds indicates that there are four active bidders. No doubt that's going to be the big four. Dish, Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. So as we've seen in prior Spectrum auctions, the FCC is only going to release the amount of Spectrum that was successfully auctioned and then the geographic locations of each successful bid, but not the identity of the bidder. So analysts are likely watching very closely to see if the demand stays high. Um, if it does stay high, maybe it'll be similar to kind of like C-Band. Uh, but if the demand is a little bit lower, it might end up kind of like how CBRS is or kind of somewhere in between. In my estimation, you know, that's kind of where I think it's going to end up. I think it's going to be somewhere in between the two. Uh, CBRS last year raised a total of $4.6 billion in bids. That was for 70 megahertz of mid-band spectrum. And uh, that was 10 megahertz blocks as well. So kind of like what we're seeing in this one. Uh, the C-band auction raised a total of $81 billion in bids. But that was for 280 megahertz of spectrum. And, you know, that's a little bit different because, you know, CBRS is a low power frequency uh, because of the you know the use cases uh this particular auction spectrum auction 110 has 100 megahertz of spectrum although some license will be subjected 
to sharing rules and federal user restrictions. But it is going to be full power broadcast like we see with C-Band, unlike the low power CBRS. So um, you know, this should be pretty nice. Expect more clarity in the later rounds. I would expect at some point in like the 20s or the 30s in those rounds, we'll know more and we can predict a little bit better. Uh, the auction reserve is set to just under $15 billion for the clearances of licenses. If it does not reach that reserve price, winners will not get access to the spectrum and it will be considered a failed auction. There appears to be some concern about the Spectrum auction and the lack of demand this early in the auction. Uh, it's a possibility if that the demand doesn't pick up that it may not reach you know, the $15 billion reserve price. It's like $14.8 billion. I don't want to overreact, but there are some people speculating that maybe Verizon and T-Mobile are signaling to each other to not show interest and don't drive up the pricing and to like dead the auction which is i mean that's kind of a conspiracy theory if you think about it it seems unlikely because this is probably the last spectrum auction of its type for a few years you know we had the cbrs we had the c-band and now this we're not going to have much mid-band for a minute i would assume that in the near future we're going to see more of the millimeter wave auctions going on and they're going to have to sort through the 12 gigahertz and the 6 gigahertz and the legato band and all these things have to get worked out. If indeed T-Mobile and Verizon are signaling to each other, they're trying to sabotage AT&T. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, AT&T is kind of they're they're kind of the boss of all of the networking because of how much fiber they run. Right? So if they since they have all this fiber and they've got the first net deal pretty much at the point where it's like, oh, maybe we should sabotage AT&T because they have so much infrastructure, because they are so much of this ownership advantage. Maybe we should signal, you know, maybe that's what they're doing. I don't know. I just... The reason I don't think that's the case is because there's no precedence. We haven't... I don't think we've ever seen this. So I wouldn't expect it to all of a sudden be happening. I mean, it makes sense that T-Mobile is not that engaged in this auction because they're probably going to focus their efforts on Spectrum Auction 108 with uh, the rest of the 2.5 gigahertz, the EBS, BRS. So that makes more sense to me. And the other piece is that Verizon went in so big with C-Band. Do they even really need all that much? Maybe this is the indication that they don't. But the unfortunate thing is, is maybe this is a chance for Dish to capitalize. Maybe this ends up being Dish's calling card, this and their AWS holdings. You know, I think all of that is more likely than a collusion between T-Mobile and Verizon to somehow, some way, get this auction, you know, killed off and it doesn't reach its reserve. You know, so I don't know. I, I think it's while it's an unlikely scenario, I guess it's always possible. We can't rule it out. But most definitely, it would get exposed. <laughs> you know, it just it wouldn't make sense for them to risk it. I mean, the penalty would be absurd. It would be unprecedented. I just I couldn't imagine it happening. But yeah, like RFK is saying, running out of mid-band, the focus is going to be millimeter wave with 5G and 6G anyways. You know, and, and hey, this is your last chance to grab up 10, 20, 30, 40 megahertz of some pr relatively low mid-band. Because after this... We're going six gigahertz. We're going, uh, you know, we're going twelve gigahertz, and then after that, it's it's all millimeter wave, right? Yeah, Tito, I I feel like if if the demand is low, the pricing is low. That's Dish's way to get in on the cheap, you know, and they can actually afford to buy some spectrum. Dish got priced out of C band. Dish bought CBRS because the price was right. If this ends up ends up pricing like uh, CBRS, that's right up Dish's alley. Right, they can get bargain spectrum licenses, but so could Verizon, and so could AT and T, and so could um, and so could uh, T Mobile too. So, yeah, yeah. Who knows? That's true. Zero cool. Who knows? If only we could be a fly on the wall. 